Welcome to African Minds, a platform that focuses on the arts, history, and culture of Africa and the great minds we can draw inspirations from. On Wednesdays, we focus on legendary and contemporary African writers who have contributed immensely to the arts and literature of Africa. Top 10 books by Chinua Achebe you should read. Chinua Achebe was a Nigerian novelist, poet, and critic. He is regarded as one of the most influential writers of all time. His books have inspired many, and this is a list of our top 10 picks. Number 10. How the Leopard Got Its Claws It is a fable which delves into how the manipulation of fear can corrupt civil society. With disturbingly true-to-life characterizations, Achebe explores the danger of power taken by force, which leads to the destruction of a culture and peace. Read this book to find out which animal is shown to be weak and which one is shown to be vicious and how that all reflects society's perception of power. Number 9. Morning Yet on Creation Day this book is a collection of 15 of Chinua Achebe's essays. It largely focuses on African literature, whether there is such a thing, which language it's to be written in, and the role of the writer in the African society. After his global success, Achebe was invited to a number of international symposiums. He attacked how European literary critics were unwilling to accept the validity of non-European sensibilities and also made it a point to defend himself against critics back home who insisted African literature could not be written in English. Contemporary African writers will find this a particularly interesting read, as they will be exposed to the historic, linguistic, and intellectual aspects of African literature. Number 8. Girls at War and Other Stories the short stories present different characters, interesting in their own way as they deal with the struggles of life. We read of a man who is suddenly shunned by his village when a madman humiliates him. A young nanny who is cheated out of an education she was promised. A loving couple who are trying to convince their relatives of a love forbidden because of ethnicity. And several other stories. Displaying an astonishing range of experience, Chinua Achebe draws readers inside the hearts and minds of people whose ideals must compete with the struggle for survival. Number 7. Arrow of God The novel centers on the chief priest of several Igbo villages in colonial Nigeria, who confronts Christian missionaries in the 1920s. This novel is called Arrow of God because this chief priest compares himself to an arrow in the bow of the gods. It is a phrase drawn from an Igbo proverb in which a person, or sometimes an event, is said to represent the will of God. Do you feel you are a tool in this universe, here to fulfill a purpose you may or may not know? Or you feel you define your purpose for yourself? Whatever your beliefs are, Arrow of God is a book you must read. Number 6. There Was a Country There Was a Country, a personal history of Biafra, is his personal account of the Nigerian Civil War from 1967 to 1970, also known as the Biafran War. The book covers his early life in the eastern region of Nigeria, at a point when he was already a successful writer with a family. His life, however, was thrown into complete chaos as war consumed his region, and he and his family were suddenly in a battle for survival. There was a country as considered one of the defining works of modern African non-fiction. Number 5. No Longer at Ease 
A lot of Chinua Achebe's writings dwell on the conflicts between traditional African values and Western culture during colonial times. This 1960 novel takes it a step further as the main character, an Igbo man, leaves his village for an education in Britain. His new environment presents a life as far as what life was to him as possible. He struggles to balance the demands of his family and village for the monetary supports, whilst trying to keep up with the materialism of Western culture. Number four, a man of the people. A young and educated narrator tells a story of his conflict with his former teacher, who enters a career in politics in a fictional 20th century African country. The young narrator represents the changing younger generation whilst the politician represents the traditional West African customs. Though this book was written as a mere satirical piece, it brought controversy when after publication, a military coup in Achebe's home country, Nigeria, happened almost exactly as it did in his novel. It is said that by the time of publication, everything that happened in the book had already occurred in Nigeria, except a military coup. And indeed, it went ahead to happen almost according to the script. Number three, Chike and the River. Chike and the River is a children's story published in 1966. Why is a children's story this high up on the list? Here is why. It is the story of a boy named Chike who yearns to cross the Niger River for no other reason than to see what's on the other side. As this young boy leaves his village to go and stay with his uncle in the big city, young readers get an intimate look at African life and connect with Chiki as if they are a part of him. Though it's a children's book, readers can't help but appreciate the depth of metaphor. What his fascination with the river represents and his reluctance to dream, knowing curiosity has its price. But it is only by dreaming that Chiki can enlarge himself, which is a remarkable metaphor for modernization, despite its gloominess. Number 2. Anthills of the Savannah It may not be his most popular book, but this 1987 novel is one of the most critically acclaimed African books. Antilles of the Savannah takes place in a fictional West African country where a man has taken part in a military coup. The three main characters, Commissioner for Information, his lover, who works in the Ministry of Finance, and an editor, have all known the man they now call His Excellency since their youth. They still see him as Sam and it gets pretty emotional observing him through their eyes, as the Sam they knew slowly undergoes moral deterioration and becomes a totalitarian. Number 1. Yes, you guessed it. Things Fall Apart. Originally published in 1958, this novel chronicles pre-colonial life in Africa and the arrival of the Europeans. The novel follows the life of an Igbo man, a local wrestling champion in the fictional clan of Umufia. The story digs into his personal history, the culture of the Igbo, and the influence of colonialism and Christian missionaries on him, his family, and the whole community. Things Fall Apart has come to be seen as the archetypal modern African novel in English and helped pave the way for numerous other African writers. It is read not just in Africa, but in Europe and North America, where it has spawned numerous analysis and literary criticism. It has sold more than 10 million copies worldwide and has been translated into more than 50 languages. Thanks for sticking with us to the end. Which great African writer do you want us to make a video on? Let us know in the comments section. Be sure to subscribe to African Minds for more of this content.